Welcome to the viewers at home um, and live with us at Sunshine Library. Uh, so first off, Fremont City Council respectfully acknowledges and recognises the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people as the traditional custodians of this land and pays respect to their elders past, present and future. So Brimbank is an area rich in writers and storytelling talent um, and Brimbank Libraries are looking to celebrate the best microfiction stories from young writers that the western suburbs have to offer. We ask all interested writers to submit bite-sized microfiction pieces of up to 200 words inspired by the phrases explore, discover, sunshine. Each entry was in the running for a $300 in prizes including the first prize of $100 book collection from the Sun Bookshop in Yarraville. Okay. So first we would like to acknowledge all the writers who have submitted their work, our esteemed judge and author Ivan ben Barak, and the hardworking planning committee behind this competition. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Brimbank Library's Youth Microfiction Competition Awards. Thank you for joining us this celebration of young Western Suburbs writers. We were very excited to be able to run a competition and celebrate the writing talent of our municipality. I can't, that went hard for me. We have had so many wonderful entries this year. We received over 70 entries. And they range in theme and tone across the full spectrum of fiction writing and genres. Our themes for the competition was explore, discover, sunshine, and our entrants were incredibly creative and innovative in the ways that they interpret this prompt. We had stories from a dog's point of view, stories about cold and pig, and even a story about leprechaun. Choosing three top stories from such a strong field of entrance was challenging, which is why we enlisted the assistance of award-winning, internationally published writer, Aydan ben to help us select the four stories receiving awards this afternoon. We ended up with four. We will, of course, be announcing the four award-winning entries and reading them aloud, but before we do so, we would like to celebrate some of the standout entries from this year's awards. Some of the honourable mentions include Ciara McCarthy, whose story was described as a yummy delight of observation and anticipation. Jacob Camilleri, whose story was described as an evocative description of a day and night in the city. Tina Ty, whose story of a note in a bottle on a beach was compelling and well told with hints of mystery and regret and Riley Kay, whose story was described as a dog's very eventful first day in its new home, from a dog's point of view and with a very dog-like sensibility and rhythm. My colleague Scott had volunteered to read three of the runner-up stories that were submitted, and um, stories that we are sure you will love. So without further delay, our first honorable mention story is Experiment by Albert Hume. Hello everybody and welcome to our Microfiction Awards. Uh, as Ricky uh, mentioned, we had some standout entries this year, some just amazing stories. They were a genuine pleasure to read, and it was really hard for Edan to pick out uh, winners from these stories. It, uh, it was a real challenge. As a result, we've got a number of honourable mentions, and the first one I'd like to share with you is Experiment 141 by Albert Hume. Now, the judges' notes from this story were that it was an action-packed science crime thriller leaving us wanting more. This could be the first page of a book or a series. So we're looking forward to reading the series, Albert. So experiment 141. Hands up, the police shouted. You're under arrest for illegal experiments. Crap, Zool mumbled. As a teenage alchemist, Zool is local. Unlike other teens, he likes to stay in his dark basement. He isn't allowed in the public anyway. All of his experiments were illegal, gaining him a reputation. He was in the middle of his 140th experiment when suddenly police barged into his basement. While being shoved into the police car, Zool wondered, why did I tell people about my experiments? Why didn't I flee? He was drowned in his thoughts. Zool was taken to a courtroom where he had to reason for his crimes. Zool, Christina, what was the reason for your crimes? The judge asked. I just wanted to be praised, Your Honor, Zool replied. That is not a valid reason, Christina. I have reached the verdict. I find the defendant, Zul Christina, guilty and sentenced to death row, the judge called. So thank you, Albert, for that wonderful story. Uh, as the judge noted, that could be the start of a novel, maybe, or even a series of stories. Now, our second honourable mention is Guiding Light by Christian Rosette. Now, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Uh, judges' notes are that it's an enigmatic and expressive reflection 
of what guides us. So, guiding light. I've been told to look inside myself to find my guiding light. But there's ignorance in that statement, neglectful of a person's lack of faith. The light I guide myself with is external. My guides come from the dim glow of the moon and stars that guide travellers when they're lost. The constellations are my own lens, my own organs. Their place in the sky acts as my mirror. I wouldn't know where to start with this search for eternal light. I couldn't start with my bad habits, as they don't harm my virgin pink lungs or create scar tissue in my liver. Instead, the taste of metallic coats itself on my tongue and present scars and litter my palms. If I were to self-reflect, my fingers would delve themselves deep within my ribs in search of this light. Fishing for an answer, I would accidentally dig out my heart, hold it in my hands and watch it beat in front of me, mesmerised. The iambic pentameter of my beating heart calls to me as if I were temperate. Would I be wrong to convince myself that heavenly sunlight manifested in my hands? That I wasn't just holding raw, unfiltered life? So thank you very much, Chris, much Crystal, for that just fantastic story. It's so evocative. Now, our third and final honourable mention story is Stranded by Alia Barone. Now, this is a fantastic story. Um, our judges' notes for this one uh, were that it was evocative, that it just it had a grimness and sort of sadness to it uh, that the judges loved. So, my body shivering, my hands in a nerve shaking, I'm stranded on this worn out and abandoned looking road with only dead trees surrounding me. As I stare into the distance, all I see is darkness. It looks like a dark tunnel down there. I've been walking up this road for weeks and there seems to be no end to it. My clothes are covered in dirt from sleeping on the road and my hands are grazed from the thorns on the trees. Calling it a day, I've made myself comfortable and closed my eyes, expecting tomorrow to be the same as today. When I woke up the next morning, I was in a room with clean white walls in new crisp clothes. As I looked around the room, it all seemed familiar. The sound of the IV machine, all the tubes around me. I had been here before. So thank you very much, Alia, for that beautiful story. Now, all of our honourable mentions, we have certificates that we'll be sending out to you. Uh, so thank you again for those wonderful stories. Uh, the judges love them, and it's been a real genuine pleasure to read them myself. And now I'll hand back over to Ricky for the announcement of our awards. We would now like to announce the four winners of the awards in ascending order and read each piece aloud. So firstly, the awards for the 14 to 18 year old category. In second place for a $50 Sun Bookshop selection, we have The Missing Sunshine by Michelle Liu. Judges note so there's a something seen in media res. I want to know what happened before and what happens next. The Missing Sunshine by Michelle Liu. Fiercely looking back in front, the man is gazing, gaining closure. Sadashi hurls himself over a fence, ignoring the slashes in his palms and legs. Sweat trembles down his face as he plunges into the woods. Sadashi crashes through the dry, thorny branches into a helpless little sack shelter. A hut? Small puffs of steam escape his mouth as he leans into a well exhausted, leans into a wall exhausted, dropping to the dirt floor. His hands and legs feel like they've been pierced. Sadashi peers outside, his eyes adjusting to the dark woods. The more he looks, the more the trees look the same. The more the pathway he took disappears. A flicker of fire points in his direction, causing him to jerk up in fear. You okay there? A voice queries. Tadashi remains silent, not daring to breathe. The man is chasing you, isn't he? The voice continues to interrogate. Tadashi nods as his body, body starts to relax. Well, he isn't anymore. He's right here, ha ha. The man drops the torch, swinging the sword closer to Tadashi. Tadashi only wants to discover, to explore. He wants to find the sunshine people spoke about. The sunshine that went away because of the man. Congratulations, Michelle. That is a great story filled with many feelings for me. I'm, I'm creeped out by it and do want to know how Tadashi got into that situation to begin with. Okay, so for in first place for the $100 Sun Bookshop selection, we have Take My Hand So We Can Reach the End of the Sky by Stella Rose D. 
Judge's notes are touching, lyrical, and hinting of something much larger lying just beyond its borders. This is beautifully written. Take my hand so we can reach the end of the sky. The light is everywhere. Although it seems lonely in this room, the woman knows they are surrounded by dancing stars. She smiles, watching those flecks of fluorescent yellow light up the peeling brown wallpaper like golden fireflies. Sometimes the babe will graze his fingers around the stars, but they always flicker away, escaping the grasp of, grasp of his tiny hand. There is a book in the woman's lap. Woman's lap. Inside there are paintings of everywhere, seas, forests, mountains, but the woman's favourite is the open blue sky. The babe taps his tiny finger against the page. I'll take you there, the woman whispers. The babe giggles. One day we'll get on a plane and I'll fly you up there, anywhere you want. She lifts the babe up into the air, spinning him around while giggles fall from his mouth and dribble runs across his chubby, chubby cheeks. The woman settles him down, wiping his drool with her sleeve and gently tucking the blanket under his chin. The mother reaches towards the lamp and with a faint click, the sun disappears. The stars fade away and the babe drifts into slumber, feeling the warmth of his mother's hand pressed against his beating heart. Congratulations, Stella. That is a beautiful story, very descriptive. I'm gonna pass over to Scott again for our 10 to 13 year old category. So thank you for all those wonderful stories in the 14 to 18 year old category. They were just amazing um, and some very well deserved winners there. Uh, now, finally, for our largest category, the 10 to 13 year old category, we had so many great entries for this. Uh, I think in the end it was over 60 entries that we had in this category from across the city of Brentback, and it was just a festival of, of writing talent. It was, it was fantastic. And as we had so many entries, we decided that we'd have three prizes in this category because we, we just couldn't pick uh, only two. Uh, there were just too many good ones. So uh, we'll have two second equal places and one first place. So firstly, in second equal place for a $50 Sun bookshop selection, we have Sleepy Suburbs by Anastasia Lockhurst. Now the judges notes from this story are that it was heavy, foreboding and palpable moving between the present and the near future. And it's my pleasure to read it out loud. So Sleepy Suburbs by Anastasia Lockhurst. Katie wandered through the empty streets, smelling the heavenly scents of spring flowers, mingling with the sharp odor of freshly cut grass. The air was warm and slightly humid, but pleasantly so. Not so hot it was sticky and heavy, but peaceful, like a soft blanket draped over sunshine. The lights in every home were dim and curtains drawn. Katie was the only one on the street and the empty still air was silent, save for the wailing of an ambulance and the twittering of birds building their nests. It was early spring, after all. As she strolled through the sleepy suburbs, she thought about the storm soon to arrive. The dark clouds on the horizon were lit up with fire as the sun set just below them. Katie knew this was literally the calm before the storm. Later tonight, the cold, harsh winds would howl at the windows like a stray, feral dog begging to be let in. Rain would force down in sheets, rattling at doors and window panes as thunder growled, low and rumbling, and lightning split the sky in half for brief milliseconds, lighting up the inky black clouds. But for now, the sky slept. Congratulations, Anastasia. That is such a great piece of writing. Uh, I particularly love the line, the cold, harsh winds would howl at the windows like a stray, feral dog begging to be, uh, begging to be let in. It's just a wonderful story. Uh, we will have a certificate send, uh, coming out to you and we'll be in touch to um, speak with you about making a selection at the Sun Bookshop. Now, I said we had two second place winners, equal second place, uh, as our judges love both of these stories. And the second, second second place story is Replay Our Memories by Kimberly Lou. The judges' notes for this one are that it was a powerful story of love, hate, and blood. This story is both dark and hopeful and has a grim beauty that sticks in a reader's mind. And it's my pleasure to read this one out. So, Replay Our Memories by Kimberly Lou. My utter failure of a son, standing right before my eyes. 
The detachment between us went on for too long. Nevertheless, it only seems it was yesterday there was a young boy wandering through fields of flowers. Don't pretend you care about me when you've abandoned and betrayed me. His voice was unstable, trembling uncontrollably. His tear-stained visage conceals the misery and wrath that's projecting from those soulless eyes. I didn't. I simply did what was best. My son. Casting my spear aside to stroke a tiny section of his indigo hair. When his fearful gaze meets mine, pity overcomes me. <laughs> Due to you, I've endured prolonged suffering. And yet you dare believe I will show forgiveness to a worthless insect like you? No, but you must know that I am truly sorry. Abruptly engulfing him into my arms, embracing the boy wholeheartedly, but a stab through the heart sabotages the moment. I gasp as the blade instantaneously releases my flesh, blood streaming from my open wound, and I gradually collapse. When one would seek retribution, I feel I've gained eternal peace. The universal delight, a speck of sunshine glimmers within me. A smile forms. I love you. Thank you, Kimberly, for that magnificent story of blood and hope and, uh, and, and patricide. Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we didn't have any other stories that dealt with patricide, and this one really stood out. I particularly loved um, a stab through the heart sabotages the moment. I thought that that was just a wonderful piece of understatement. I think a stab through the heart would sabotage most moments, and it's a fantastic story, so thank you, Kimberly. Uh, we will have um, a voucher for you, that will, uh, or a selection of books that you can make. We'll be in touch with a, um, with a certificate uh, showing how well you've done in this competition, and thank you again for your wonderful story. Now that brings us finally to our first place winner in the 10 to 13 uh, age bracket in our microfiction competition for 2022. And our first place story is Buggy's Big Adventure by Julian Yang. Now the judges' notes are four beetles with just the best beetle names team up when times get rough. I'd love to hear more of the Fab Four's adventures. And who can resist the genius level simile, their friendship was as tight as Superman's undies? <laughs> uh, that is a line that definitely stood out for us. So without any further ado, Buggy's Big Adventure by Julian M. Buggy was a small beetle that lived in a place called the backyard. Buggy lived with his best friends, Stinky, Marchy, and Flutter. All the backyard friends had special powers. One day, in the backyard, the entire tree fell to the ground. All the backyard friends got startled and started running around. Buggy hid under some logs. After a while, he saw everything in their home get damaged. Buggy walked out, looked around, and saw his best friends all around him. Buggy realised that their home or any other things that were in their area were replaceable, but their friendship was as tight as Superman's undies. So the backyard friends came together with a brilliant plan. Then the backyard friends worked all day and night to find a safe place where they could have fun and live peacefully with no stress. With everybody's power set, they could make a perfect team. Marchie had food hunting abilities that made the others active. Stinky gave them great protection, especially from evil predators. Flutter made excellent decisions, which Buggy loved. And Buggy gave everyone confidence to continue even when times get tricky. They built up their home and their friendship lasted forever. Congratulations, Julian. And thank you again for that Superman's undies simile uh, that we all loved so much. Uh, a very well-deserved win. Uh, thank you very much to all the entrants in our competition this year. Um, all of our honourable mentions, all of our winners will receive certificates that we'll be in touch and send them out to you. Uh, and those of you who won prizes uh, will be in touch to arrange a selection from the Sun Bookshop. You can choose whatever you like and we'll arrange to purchase it and get it to you. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, Ricky, would you like me to close, close it off? Yeah, go for it. Yep. Uh, so thank you everybody who's come today. Uh, thank you for everybody who's watching from home and to all of our writers uh, who contributed pieces to the competition. We'd particularly like to thank everyone whose stories we read out today. Albert Hewn, Christian Rosette, Michelle Lou, Stella Rose, Anastasia Lockhurst, 
uh, Julian Lang and I think Michelle Kim as well, yes. Uh, wonderful stories. Um, we were just so amazed to see the talent out there in Breckbeck. And of course, thank, uh, thank you to our judge, author Idan Barek, uh, Ben Barak, who was going to provide us with a video today, but has come down with a severe case of the flu uh, and has been in bed for days, so hasn't been able to send us a video. Uh, it's not COVID, thankfully, uh, so he is okay. Uh, so congratulations again to our award winners. We hope you've enjoyed hearing these wonderful stories and we look forward to seeing all of you around Greenbank. Thank you very much.